Galesburg Speedway is the seventh stop on the calendar for the American Short Trackers Volts and Super Trucks, the second and final quarter miler of the season. Several drivers were handed out penalties following the race at Kalamazoo. Jack Clark and Scotty Redden were handed points penalties for causing rather silly and questionable incidents under caution, so they will be under the watchful eye of the officials this week, as they will both be racing. And Brandon Princehorn was also handed a slightly less severe point penalty for causing a crash that wrecked herself and Jack Clark later in the race. The officials also addressed that there will not be as much tolerance for incidents such as the ones that happened at Kalamazoo, specifically referring to the incidents of Jack Clark and Scotty Redden. For the first time in his career, Michael McKinley will lead the field to the green flag as he is on full position for the 50 lap race. And on his outside is Alex Martinez. Martinez had a poor showing at Kalamazoo in his home race last week, where he went out due to an engine failure. So he really wants to make up for that, and he's doing a good job by starting on the front row. And look who started right behind McKinley, that is Jack Clark, the driver who took McKinley out of last week's race by brake checking him under caution while McKinley was running in second. That is the aforementioned incident that we mentioned in the pre-race that got Clark his big penalty. The other driver who received a penalty for an incident under caution at Kalamazoo is Scotty Redden. He qualified in the lower midfield again, and is going to get turned into the infield by Kevin Thompson in the 90. He comes back up turn 3 with no other options, but to run into Caden Holt and Daryl Quick, and Quick goes spinning off the course. The 82 truck in trouble again. He was the points leader after Winston, but this is the third race in a row in which he's been caught up in a crash, and since he spun so far off the track, this would not bring out a yellow. Terry Ruiz Jr. is making his way forward, trying to get by Alex Martinez for the fourth position, but he gets rudely dumped by Mike Ramos off of turn four, bringing out the first yellow of the day on the fourth lap. Ruiz Jr. has been on the receiving end of a lot of other people's mistakes ever since his uh, sixth place debut at Nelson Ledges, through no fault of his own, of course. Ron Fergus is very slow to get going on the restart, and Scotty Redden not showing any patience for him and almost turning into the inside. Can't necessarily blame Brett for that, though. As McKinley is still leading on the restart, Jack Clark is still running right behind him, but the two have not gotten together yet. Honestly, I don't think they will, but uh, Hunter Blaze has just been rudely shoved out of line by Alex Martinez. Blaze was running in the third spot, but now he has lost a lot of positions. Fortunately, it's still early on the race, but uh, Martinez could have used a bit more patience there. And you saw the other Team Michigan trucks spinning off turn three, Amberly Weiss, minding her own business in around the 10th spot, receives a little bump from Nancy Keith. Uh, just a bit of a racing deal there. Keith drove a little too hard into the corner when she was too close. And Weiss goes spinning into the earth in embankment. And that actually will bring out the caution, despite Quick spinning off that same spot earlier on the race. So, interesting call by the officials there. Clark jumps to the outside as the field takes the green again, but he did not get nearly as good of a restart as he needed to make that move work. And there's a truck going through the infield, there's a crash on the restart. That was Ron Fergus, I do believe, and there was a couple of orange trucks in trouble. There's a few orange trucks in the field now that the Team Michigan trucks have liveries. Here's what happened. Once again, Ron Fergus is getting a very slow restart. Daryl Quick all over the back of it, and Quick gets turned by Scotty Redden. This is not going to bring out a yellow because it occurred at the back of the field, so even more hard luck striking Daryl Quick and Scotty Redden, as well as Ron Fergus. He gets turned into the grass and almost strikes the wall protecting that lamppost, spins back up turn one, and Amberly Weiss runs square into the back of him. Nowhere for Weiss to go, she got taken completely by surprise. Weiss finished in eighth place last week on her debut, and was looking to have another good run here today before she got spun around by Nancy Keith to bring up the second caution, and now she gets caught up in this accident, so even more setbacks for the 75 team. We're on board Weiss right now, there's Quick spinning right in front of her, she gets around the outside and looks to be in the clear, but out of nowhere, Ron Fergus slides up right into her pad, and she has not many options other than to run into the 72 f Weiss will continue on and will not even have to pit to get any damage repaired, and considering the hit that uh, she gave to Ron Fergus, I find that rather surprising. Nonetheless, she will continue on. Zach Churchill moves to the inside of Jack Clark and will take the second position from him, like Ramos running in fourth now. Ramos had a good run at Flat Rock earlier this year where he started on the pole and led several laps, but he has not had many good runs since. It seems that the 23 team knows how to get it done in these quarter miners. At the other end of the field, we have David Savaldelli running in 17th place. 
The 15 truck was originally not scheduled to show up to any more races this year, but after taking victory at the Nelson Ledges Road Course, Alessandro Rossini decided to field Savaldelli here at Galesburg, as well as the upcoming season finale at Berlin Raceway. So we'll be seeing a little bit more of Savaldelli in the series this year. Also running at the back with him is Murray Brousseau, Terry Ruiz Jr., and Kate Holt. Ruiz Jr., of course, was spun out to bring out the first yellow, so that's why he's back there. Caden Holt has been the victim of some absolutely rotten luck all season long, and only has one top 10 to his name, and that's rather a disappointment. He's a very good racer, and to be honest, that dumpster livery on the 83k is one of the most beautiful that I've ever seen. As Michael McKinley, still leading the race, McKinley a racer from the Bloomington Speedway in Indiana, one of the many dirt track racers that have surprisingly showed up this series, and he has impressed all season long. He has also been a victim of bad luck, but so far so good for the 99M. David Savaldelli is going to get turned around by Mary Brousseau on the front stretch that's going to bring on our third yellow of the race on lap 26. Not sure what uh, Brousseau was thinking there, as you see Scotty Redden also spins in turn 1. The 25 usually a much cleaner racer than that. On board Brousseau, Savaldelli drifts up turn 4. She goes for the opening that he leaves, but there's not quite enough room and she gets into the back of the 15 turning him around. Here's Scotty Redden, who again spun up turn 1, reacting to Savaldelli's 15th truck. Fortunately, he does not hit those tire walls there, and will continue on without much of a problem. Now coming around to take his lap back. He beat Ron Fergus to the caution, so he's going to get around him, and he runs into Ron Fergus! Under caution for the second week in a row, Scotty Redden has run into the back of another truck, as seemingly intentionally as well, as we're going to ride on board him, Fergus slows up to let the 57 go by, and he aims straight for him. That is near a carbon copy of last week's incident, and I don't think that the officials are going to tolerate that at all. It's absolutely ridiculous that he did it once, much less two weeks in a row. On the restart, McKinley is still your leader, and Zach Churchill pushes up turn one, opening up the door for Mike Ramos. He wants to move up into that third spot. Alex Martinez trying to take fifth away from Gordon Davis. The points leader having another good run here today, although he may be on his way to the back as he is now on the outside line with Zach Churchill. Ramos trying to get it done, but Churchill putting up a good fight on the outside. Eventually, however, Ramos would prevail, and Martinez would follow him through into fourth, and immediately stick his nose underneath the 23. Martinez wants to get back to the front. He has not led all race. In fact, uh, no one that is not Michael McKinley has led all race. And the 23 is now back and forth as Martinez completes the pass on the inside. Nancy Keith is also working her way forward. Keith has been a rather quiet racer all season long. She's not very high up in the points because she's been involved in a few too many crashes, but she's also got some good results under her name, and is looking to get another one here today. She's now in the top five. John White is another driver having a quiet, good run today. He's in seventh place, but we've kind of come to expect this from White this year. He is an outside championship contender, despite not being a contention for very many wins throughout the year. Mike Ramos is be er, continuing excuse me, to fall through the field. He has not been able to find his way back to the inside line. Kevin Thompson passes in fourth position, and Chris Washer hooks the 23 and turns him into the grass. Ramos is going to slide back up turn one, and the truck steps out from under him, and he goes off in the grass. That's going to be the fourth caution of the race on lap 41, after Chris Washer not paying much attention. Despite his win at Toledo, Washer has been kind of a reckless driver throughout the year and the restart will occur with four laps to go. If there is a yellow, it will surely end the race, but if there's not, then once again it is a one-mile dash to the finish. McKinley's still your leader, and Jack Clark is pushing up the track in turn two. Alex Martinez is about to take full advantage as he goes to the inside, trying to take the second spot. Nancy Keith is in a good position. She's going to get by Jack Clark as well as soon as Martinez clears him. Gordon Davis is stuck on the outside. John White is also on his way forward. And on the white flag lap, Keith has made a move to the inside of Martinez, trying to take the second spot. And there's not much that Martinez can do on the outside. The 18 is going to take the second position. But in front of all of them, this day belongs to Michael McKinley. He's going to become the first pole sitter to lead from start to finish. And after a dominating showing, Michael McKinley and McKinley Motors take the victory at the Galesburg Speedway. Again, the first victory for McKinley. Some good luck finally going the way of his team. 
Congratulations to them. Keith, her best result of the season as she finishes in second. This is also Alex Martinez's best finish as he's in third. Another fantastic top five run for John White. Jack Clark finished in fifth after falling back from second on the final restart. Kevin Thompson works his way up to sixth after starting in the back. Gordon Davis finishes in seventh. Zach Churchill in eighth. Amberly Weiss recovers from her struggles earlier to claim her second top ten in her second start. Good job to her. And Daryl Quick rounds out the top ten.